the woman with the um, alabaster bottle. This is Simon the leper's sister, Mary. You, you know her? Magdalene. This is the prostitute. She comes into the house of Simon uh, who has a condition. Uh, although Jesus is in the house, he's still in his current condition, but God is relaxing in the chair and so is Simon. But she interrupts what seems to be comfortable and says, I need a breakthrough, a healing, a helping. The thing that I saw today that was different than any other day was Jesus' response when they looked at her in indignation from when she would pour oil on his feet. He said, you're talking about selling it and giving it to the poor. The poor you always going to have with you, but you won't always have me. When she anointed me, this is when she poured the oil on me, she anointed me to bury me. Then the last verse that you read says, After that, Judas went and asked him, What will you give me? And I'll deliver him unto you. If I could, I'm not, I'm not gonna preach this morning. If I if if I did, if I could, if if they invited me, what I would call this is I have to live through this. I'm anointed for this. You, you got to know that a lot of times people will be around you and not be supportive of you. Simon is in a condition, but he's relaxed. You got to be careful of people who are too relaxed next to you. They don't want greater for themselves, nor do they want greater for you. They want you to just chill and be all right in your current condition. You got to be like Mary and interrupt the relaxation and say, I need something greater than just being here stagnant, than just being here stupid, than just, just being here played with, and being used and misused and abused. I have to interrupt it, but watch where she poured the oil as she poured it on his feet. God, I need you to walk into unhealed places of my past and fix it. I need you to go ahead of me and prepare the way for me. I need you to stand right here with me and, and support me while I'm falling apart. I, I anoint his feet because his feet is where his strength is. But notice when they anoint his feet, uh, he says to the ones who are next to him, you're looking at her judgingly. But you always have the ones that you're talking about helping with you. Some folk only want to be close enough to you, not to help you, just to talk about you. You, you got to be careful of every hand up and hand out. Is that if everything that comes for you doesn't mean that it comes from God. It may have his name on it. It may be gift wrapped. It may have a boat on it. It may even have sign, a child of God. But know everything that somebody gives you is not for the betterment of you. There's some stuff that just comes so folk can have a receipt to talk about you. He says, you'll always have them, but you won't always have me. You got to tell the enemy, you, you may have had me, but you won't always have me. He says that this is what they did to me. They said they talked about me, but she came in a room and anointed me. They didn't like me, but she came in a room and anointed me. It's that God called me, purposed me, and now I feel like he's left me, but she's come in a room and anointed me. And I know my friends around me don't really believe me to be the son or the savior or as called or as special, but he anointed her to anoint me. And you got to understand that God will use anybody to get you. you it, it don't matter if it's uh, your mom. It don't matter if it's your child. It don't matter if it's a folk across the street who hates you. If he has to use people who hate you to come to you and anoint you, you're going to get to where you're going. Prove it, preacher. I will. He says that she anointed my feet and then Judas left. She anointed my feet, but Judas left. She anointed my feet, but Judas left. You got to know that when you are anointed from the head to the foot, that it stops not at the shoulder. It don't stop just at your mouth. It don't stop at your hands. But everything that God anoints in your head, that if your mind can think it, your mouth can speak it, your hands can form it, your feet can walk you right into it. He said, everybody's not around you to sit with you. There's some people digging plots for you next to you. See, they was hoping to bury you. He said, I, I, I know what your plan is. But she, she anointed me. Because everybody around me hate me. Acting like they love me. Gonna try and bury me. But they didn't know that this plot was a pot. You gotta grow past here. You're not meant to, to die here. Get up from there.
Is he free today? Is he alive today? Does he live? If you believe that he lives, get up. If you believe that he lives, get up. If you believe that he lives, get up. So today I'm getting up. From every place I will bury me, I get up. Every place of being stagnant, stupid, stalled, suppressed, under the duress. Jesus falls under the weight of the cross three times. That's what history books say. Every time he got up. No matter how many times enemy comes in and puts you, get up. How many thoughts in your head are gonna tell you you're gonna fail, get up. How many times they trip you up, walk away from you, leave you with no crutch. Knock the shoes off your feet, break your legs, get up. Get up. She anointed me for burial. She'll bury me, but I'll be able to grow through it. They, they didn't know that you were a seed, that you would grow past here, that when they stepped on you, they weren't doing nothing but helping God cover you. He says, you're covered to grow from it. You're covered to grow in it. You are covered because you're anointed that you will live through it. You're going to survive it. You're not going to get it. I'm getting nothing.